कुंज Shishi Guru Goranga Gantarika Giridhari Radhikaraman Giriju Ki Jai Ho Om Agena Timurandisya Janandana Salakaya Chakshu and Militamina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manopistam Stapitamina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Namo Maha Vandanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gora Tavashe Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First of all, I'd like to offer my heartfelt postpunctually to my Harinam Diksha Guru my Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. Second of all, to my Bhajan Shiksha Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. To my dear friend, Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. And to Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj, who has sent me all my helpers, and to the entire Guru Parampara. And also, because actually tomorrow is also a very important day, it's the appearance day of Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj. And before we spoke a little bit about Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj. So these are three bodies with one soul. Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj, and Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. So uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Today is the Kadasi here in Vrindavan. It's uh, February 6th, <laughs> Ikadasi. Jai Madhavatiti Bhakti Janani Akadasi Devi Ki Jai. Jai, the mother of devotion. 
So what better way to celebrate than to glorify such exalted devotees? So Friday, February 9th, is the appearance day of Bhaktivedanta uh, Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Moni Amavasya, dark moon day, which is very appropriate because he's such a devotee of Srimati Radhika. He's just such a devotee of Srimati Radhika. And Srimati Radhika's favorite night is Amavasya because it reminds her of Srimati Radhika, of Krishna. It's dark. In her form as Gadadhar Pandit, she appeared on Amavasya and she disappeared on Amavasya. So, very special day. And it's Moni Amavasya, which means silence. And silence for the Vaishnavas means Harikata, Harinam Harikata. And we can see in the life of Gurudev, Narayan Maharaj, his Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, his life was dedicated to serving his Guru. 100% and serving his guru by his by Harinam and by Harikata. Not only speaking Harikata, but also by translating books into Hindi. His Guru Maharaj, Shila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, had given him the instructions to stay in Mathura, take care of the Mahdi in Mathura, and to translate the books of the, of the Goswamis of our Guru Parampara into Hindi, because they did not exist in Hindi. So he dedicated his life to doing bhajan here in Mathura, in Vrindavan. He opened the Rupsanat and Gaudi Amat. His Gurudev opened the Keshavji Gaudi Amat in Mathura, but he opened the Gaudi Amat, uh, Rupsanat and Gaudi Amat here in Vrindavan. And not only did he dedicate his life to Kirtan, he was one of the topmost Kirtan, Kirtaniers actually of his time. And I can verify that because his kirtan was coming from the spiritual world. It was Sabda Brahm. It wasn't just because he was a good singer. It wasn't because, you know, he, he had been, he had learned how to sing so well and learned the bhajan. No, he's actually descending from the spiritual world. From his very birth, he was very, very spiritual. He was, he appeared, he wasn't born, he appeared in a very high class Vaishnava family in the Sri Sampradaya. And he spent his youth hearing Ramayan, Mahabharat, and his father was very religious, extremely religious. And as soon as he heard the Harikata, later, after he'd been married, become a policeman, he was in his 20s, I think. I, can't, I don't remember dates so well and ages so well, but I think he was in his early 20s. He already was married with children, and he was a policeman. And for the first time in his life, a Gaudiya Vaishnava came to where he was. And that was Naratamananda Brahmachari, who was a disciple, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, later to become Bhakti Kamal Madhusudan Maharaj. And this, the person that he was working for, the superintendent of the police, actually, he was very spiritual. So we had this Brahmachari speaking in his house for seven or eight days, but he was speaking in uh, Bengali. And Gurudev didn't know Bengali, he only knew Bihari in English. But he went every day to the Harikata and it, started, it touched his heart. And uh, Narutamananda, he was very much attracted by Gurudev and how, how affectionate he was and how attentive and faithful he was to the Harikata, even though he didn't understand much. So he himself started to give Gurudev Harikata in English at nighttime after the Harikata. And they would spend all night speaking in English. And when Gurudev heard this Harikata, it, it completely, re, uh, how would you say, he's already, it just, it just reminded him, let's say, of, of what he was meant to do. And so he immediately left his family, left everything, and he went to Navadweep. And he arrived in Navadweep in the middle of the night. He hadn't told anyone he was coming, and he hadn't told anyone in his family he was leaving. So he's just coming, being pulled, being pulled by that Harikata, by that divine sound vibration, you know, coming from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, actually, just calling Mahaprabhu, just pulling, okay, now it's time for you to come. Time, time, I want you to come. And so when he reached the train station in Navadweep, it was dark. It was just, it was midnight. It was just black. But all he sees this lantern and someone going, Tewari Ji, Tewari Ji. That was his name. And he was amazed. And it was 
Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj, at that time Sajjan Sevak, and he had been sent to meet Tewari Ji by Gurudev, by his Gurudev, Bhakti Pragan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, because he knew he was coming. These are transcendental personalities. They don't have to send messages like this. So as soon as he was taken to the Mahat, he met Narahari Seva Vigraha, the mother of the Gaudiya Mahat, one of the disciples of Bhaktivedanta, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He met his Gurudev and he surrendered utterly everything at his Gurudev's lotus feet, never, always just serving his Gurudev. And he was taken under the wing or the shelter of Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj and Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj, who was already, he was there before uh, Gurudev. First came Srila Vaman Maharaj, then came Trivikram Maharaj, and then came Narayan Maharaj. They came, zoom, zoom, zoom. Three bodies, one soul. They, were, they, they got initiated at the same time, they got sannyasa at the same time, and they were always supporting each other. No envy, no jealousy like this just serving their Gurudev wholeheartedly like this in Navadvip and all over India like this. Amazing. So back to the story I was going to tell about his kirtan. <laughs> I got a little sidetracked there. So um, I came to India to live in 1989. I had come in 1975 with Prabhupada Dope and the Krishna Balaram Mandir, but I hadn't stayed. I'd been coming and going and coming, but I came to live in 1989. And um, September for Radhastami. And uh, after Radhasami, uh, um, there was a Vishwar Mahotsava, and uh, we were invited by Srila Gurudev to go to the Kesha Ji Mat to celebrate Papa's Sanyas festival. That was the first time I met Srila Gurudev. But it was from a distance. I was brand new to India, <laughs> brand new to everything, so I was a bit overwhelmed, you know. But anyhow, I had darshan, and I, I remember how good the Mahaprasadam was. <laughs> so then, a few weeks later, Srila Gurudev was opening their Gaudiya Mat in Dauji. And he was going to lay the cornerstone. And they made an announcement in this kind anyone who wants to go, they can go. There's a bus going. Now, to the one in my Mathura, two bus loads went of Biscon devotees. But the one for Dauji was very few of us. We went. And when we got to da when we got to the town of Dauji, they were having Harinam Sankirtan first. And I remember I was with the Iskai. We had a very small party, and we were going along. We were singing enthusiastically. But Srila Gurudev was leading the, the kirtan for the Gaudiya Mat, along with other devotees. I don't know who at that time. And I can remember, I could not stay with the Iskan. Kirtan. It was impossible. I was irresistibly, irresistibly drawn to Gurudev's Kirtan and to their Kirtan. And it was that, uh, the song was that one, Radha Ramana, how's it go? Yeah, but there's more. Rad, uh, and then, uh, no, no, the one we would do Govinda Damar, and then after that, what would we do? Uh, how's it go? See, I'm terrible with songs. I can't remember tunes. When we were into we Govinda Damar, Dhamma, and then after that, we'd go Rod, uh, Rod, yes, Shri Rod, hey, Rod, hey, Rod, hey, Rod, hey, Jai, 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 Shri Rod, hey. Radha Ramana Hari Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari that I I'll, I'll never forget never forget it was unbelievable And it was there in Dauji, Guru, Guru Tattva. But 
It was the same kind of calling I'd had when I met Srila Prabhupada. It was unbelievable. But just like when I met Srila Prabhupada, it was that irresistible. It just he just pulled me out of Maya completely, joined the temple in L.A. and never left. So it was at that moment that I... <laughs> Drew Dave just picked me up out of Maya again, and that was that. That was his. You know, he was my big brother, Prabhupada, my mother and father. Incredible. This kind of love and affection is irresistible if you're fortunate. If you're fortunate, it is irresistible. He himself would say, and it wasn't in a proud way, it was to reassure, he would say, there is no one who can give love the way I can. No one can give love the way I can. And he was simply speaking the truth. He wasn't proudly, you know, it was because in bhakti we learn in the Jaiva Dharma that one of the elements of essential elements of bhakti is truth. Not just humility, compassion, forgiveness, but truth. He was speaking the truth. It's like there was no one who could get love like Srila Prabhupada. Unbelievable, these kind of devotees. And that we get to meet these kind of devotees. We are so fortunate. It's like Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur says, Karuna gunag, ganaganat from Kalyana gunarnavascha. They are condensed clouds of mercy and of oceans of auspiciousness. And they're, they're just floating around the world with no care. Their only business is to distribute the mercy. Distribute the mercy of who, actually? Shimati Radhika, coming down through her beloved Krishna, who has taken on her moods, who has become Sachinandan Gorhari, so soft-hearted. And he has his emissaries everywhere. He's just sending them out, and he always will be, and he always has been, actually. Even before he appeared, you know, Lord Brahma went to go uh, Mayapur Antardweep, and he was repenting for all the uh, offenses he'd made to Krishna, right? He went to Mayapur, and who appeared? Satyananda Gorhari appeared to him way before he had vented. In Simantadweep, Parvati went. He appeared to her and gave her mercy. In Godrum, Indra was there. With Srabi, he appeared. To... Mahaprabhu is always present, always present, always ready to give his mercy, especially in Navadweep Dham, in Gaur Mandal. So we are so fortunate. So Srila Bhaktivedanta Vaman Maharaj, we already spoke about him. Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj is one such personality. Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, such personalities. And they are empowered by their Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragya and Keshav Goswami Maharaj. Such mercy. And the mercy is just flowing. And we're so fortunate because Srila Narayan Maharaj, he had his dedicated service to his Gurudev. That was in Mathura. He was not going to be leaving Mathura. He would only very he did travel with his Gurudev around India, but once he settled in Mathura, pretty much, he was there and he was dedicated to translating the Goswami books into Hindi, and into what? Into going deeper and deeper into his bhajan and into Braj Parikama, into into the heart of Braj, and giving the heart of Braj to anyone who came to him. Every year he would take hundreds of devotees on Braj Mandal Parikama and take them deeper and deeper into the heart of Braj or in Navadweep, into Navadweep Parikama and in Purusottam Puri. He, when I knew him from 1989 till he uh, decided to enter Nichilila in 2010, he pretty much didn't go anywhere else except that our beloved Srila Prabhupada bound him by love and asked him to take care of his devotees, and so he traveled all over the world. He never would have done that if Prabhupada hadn't asked him to do that. That was not his service from his guru. And he was completely dedicated to his guru, 100%. He, 
That's all he lived for was to please his guru with his words, his activities, his thoughts, everything like this. But also, Srila Bhakti Pragyad Keshavaraj and Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj were very good friends. Very, I mean, Bhakti Pragyad Keshavaraj gave Prabhupada sannyas. And they had spent months together in, in Allahabad. Was it Allahabad or Prayag? One of the, they're the same place. <laughs> same place. They had spent months together. And also in Mathura. And one time, I don't know where, but it was in 1946, the year before I was born, Srila Prabhupada had entered an assembly and Bhakti Praga and Keshavaraj was speaking and Srila Narayamaraj was there with him. And Prabhupada entered that assembly and Srila Bhakti Praga and Keshav Goswami Maharaj told Narayan Maharaj to note that person. Note that, note Prabhupada, note him. That was in 46. And Srila Gurudev said, I started serving him since 1946, as soon as I met him. They had, a, as Prabhupada would say, they had a transcendental relationship. So we thank you. Thank you, Bhakti Praga and Keshav Goswami, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, for sending us Another one of these transcendental persons, these oceans of mercy, oceans of auspiciousness. Just, just being just around him was amazing because I didn't get to be around Prabhupada so much. I served Srila Prabhupada in separation, which is also very deep, very deep. I dedicated my life to Prabhupada, distributing books for 17 years in Los Angeles, sometimes seven days a week, 12 hours a day in the airport. <laughs> You know, but I was happy. I felt close to Prabhupada. I felt close to Shishima Mahaprabhu, you know. So, uh, what was I going to say? What was I saying? Got lost on that. They send you this. Like, thank you. People say, thank you, Prabhupada. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Prabhupada, when he left, he was here. I did, oh, I know what I was saying. I didn't live like in, uh, personally close to him like many devotees that's what it was i lived in separation with Prabhupada, but he was very close he told me in my heart i'll never leave you and i, I we, it was like and he is my guru and shila much my shiksha guru who takes me closer to Prabhupada, never tried to take me away from Prabhupada. he's proper shiksha guru but as he said they're one if you have father and mother Prabhupada's my father and a big brother they're all the family it's all love and affection there's the same love and affection and yeah, but I did live in Mathura with Srila Narayan Maharaj for 10 years. And I traveled with him for 10 years around the world at the same time. And traveling around the world is one thing. But living in Mathura at the Keshavji Gauri Amat, that is a whole nother thing. That was amazing to actually live under his guidance and his, uh, his examinations, you might say, his testing, his training. And watching how he treated everyone, all the Bengali brahmacharis and all the brahmacharis there, his example of trinata pisu nichena, tarora pisu, amani namani, unbelievable. He was so tolerant, so tolerant. Because we're talking conditioned souls living in a place, and they're, you know, it's like, whoa, it's in Matura. Matura is like a, you know, there were like a, generators going as soon as the electricity went there were like 10 generators going on everywhere you know this smoky it's dirty it's noisy you know we were not close to the Jabuda. and there's this one building all these young men who are not pure devotees they're trying hard to become pure devotees you know and there was umadidi myself and shanti and then next door there was brajanath and brinda and then all the indian brahmacharis because when I first joined, mostly when I was there, the Western men didn't come till a bit later. They, they did start coming. And, uh, but uh, I sometimes I would go into Srila Narayamaraj's room, Gurudev's room. This is when he lived downstairs on the same floor as the um, temple room. Later he moved upstairs. And that was a little room. I mean a little room. Just about big enough for his bed. He had some bookshelves and a little space for people to sit. That was it. And there was a door here, and you went through another little door, and then there was a bathroom over there. And he didn't use this other room. If Trevor Cromarge came, he stayed in that other little room. I mean, it was small. And I remember going into his room, and sometimes there would be two brahmacharis in there, and they would be 
fighting like anything. I mean, practically having a fist fight and yelling and screaming at each other. Yeah, and he would just be sitting there patiently, patiently, loving them both, trying to help them come to a higher platform of bhakti. And they would be screaming. He was just so patient, tolerant. Yes. Also, the mailman would put his mail on his door. Well, you'd see all the brahmacharis reading his mail before he even read it. You know, it was like, it was quite amazing, quite amazing. And, uh, yeah. But he was always there guiding. Every day he would give harikata in the evening. Every day harikata, you know. So we just look forward to that harikata. Because this is the main way that the love and affection descends, isn't it? He would give the most amazing, especially in Mathura in Hindi. Those classes were unbelievable because he was comfortable speaking in Hindi. Comfortable. And he said he could express himself. When he was giving his classes in English, he felt like he couldn't really express himself. Plus, English doesn't really have the words to express a lot of the moods and the uh, feelings that one needs to express that's in the Harikata of Rupa Goswami, of Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, it was, so he was, and we would get translations, but we would have to wait. We would wait, especially in the early days, <laughs> in the early days, because I started living in the Mat in 1965, 1996. But I was living in Iskon before that, and at that time we were still coming over to hear the classes. You know, so sometimes in the early 90s, we would hear the class, then you have to wait through Artik, wait through Prasadam, and maybe if you're lucky at nine o'clock at night, we would all squeeze into Umadidi's room and her English was not so good. And she would try and tell us what he had said in the class. <laughs> but we really, but the thing is, you don't almost have to know the language. It's just that love is being transmitted through the heart, you know. And through his eyes, like this. It was just, woof, woof. And we couldn't wait to come back the next day. You know, even though we didn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> of course, later we got the translators that would stand, and he would speak, and then they'd try. And then later we got the, the headphones and the, what do you call it, the radios, and like that. But in one sense, it was almost nicer just to hear his voice, you know. <laughs> Like this, because he would be showering his mercy. You could see, he would just, he'd be, see, everyone there was just being showered with those particles of saffron. What do they say? Particles of saffron coming from Rod and Krishna's lotus feet, you know, like this. And his speciality, his, his special part of Lord Chaitanya's movement was to bring the heart of Rupa Goswami, you know, and Sanatan Goswami and the Goswamis, and especially coming from later Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, and to openly give, uh, give the service to the divine couple, you know, Jugal Kishore, Radha and Krishna, as a maidservant of Srimati Radhika, openly, openly speak about this. Others spoke about it in a way. Everyone spoke, everyone believed it. Even his own Gurudev didn't speak about it so much, although he wrote such beautiful songs as the Mangalartik song and Radhavu no Tatvat Asikam and so many things. Still, they weren't so openly speaking about, you know, our goal, our aspiration to become the maidservant of Srimati Radharani because we're Rupanuga. Our potential is as, as a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. He would never, never stop speaking, no matter how much he was criticized. He did not care how much he was. He was criticized by so many god brothers. He was criticized by other Gaudiya Mats, what to speak of, we know who. He was just criticized up and down. He, would, he didn't care. He did not care. He was here for a mission. He was going to do his mission. He only wanted to please his Gurudev and Mahaprabhu, and that's what he was going to do. So we did it all over the world. I remember one of the first times, and he wanted to make us understand who is Mahaprabhu? Who is 
Sachinanda and Gorhari. I remember I came walking up, I think I'm still in ISKCON, and I had read the Chaitanya Charitamrita and I knew everything, you know, kind of like gyan, but it wasn't like realized. I had read the Bhagavad I had done everything. And so he, I come up the stairs, and there he's sitting outside his room, and he looks at me, and this is, he was intense. He could make you shake. He was, he was really intense, you know. He wasn't like, sweetie, sweetie all the time, believe me. And the boys, they would say he was so heavy with them, they'd go hide in the bathroom trying to get away from him. You know, <laughs> you know? as he was, he cared about us. He really cared. So I walked up and there he's sitting there and he looks at me and he starts yelling at some of the whole places. He goes, who is Mahaprabhu? Is he Krishna? Who is he? And of course I forgot, I couldn't even think, you know. <laughs> and he says, he's Krishna. He's Krishna with the mood of Shimati Rani Rani. He wanted us to understand who is Mahaprabhu. That was his mission. Who is Mahaprabhu? And who are the Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishnavas? Who are all the associates of Mahaprabhu? Who is Srimati Radharani? Who is Krishna? What is Vraj? This was his mission, to take us deep into the heart of Vraj and Gupta Vrindavan Navadvi. Like this, and to Puri. Because this is Satchinandan Gohari, Nila Chala Chandra, Mahaprabhu there, tasting the mood of Srimati Radhika always wanting us to understand this, that there should be no other focus. Just focus on this. And how to do that? Serve your Gurudev by Guru Seva. 100% surrender to Guru. Like with myself, I'm a Prabhupada's disciple. He's my Guru. He never tried to say, well, you worship me. No, in fact, he taught me proper etiquette, which I didn't know until I met him because I'm so untrained. And Prabhupada didn't have so much time to train us in etiquette. Plus, there weren't any other gurus around where, where we were with Prabhupada. So he taught me, Srila Gurudev taught me, let's say we're having a Guru Puja for Srila Narayan Maharaj. But there's always the pictures there. He said, first, you have to go to your Gurudev and you have to offer Puspanjali to him. Even if it's someone else's appearance day, you worship your Guru first. You know, so I always now, no matter what, whoever's appearance day it is, I first go to Prabhupada, I offer my Puspanjali, then to him, he's my second, and then to whoever, like this. This is proper etiquette, like this. He never said, come to me first, come to me first. No, never. Like this. This is someone who cares. This is someone who loves us. This is someone who wants to give us the highest, highest aspiration of our hearts. He wants it to be able to be fulfilled, to be manifest as soon as possible. So he said, don't waste time. Don't waste time like this. He was always teaching us like this. We were so fortunate. We are fortunate. They're all still with us. <laughs> all of them are still with us. Um, another time, <clears throat> I may have told this story before, I'm not sure. Because um, he, he had a way of just... Um, a way, I was still in ISKCON. And um, uh, I was with a friend of mine, and I was with Pishima from Imlitala, and we had gone to Puri. And it was my one of my my first real time going to Puri. I may have been to Puri before, but it was but this is like we were there for a long time, and we went deep into that. Pishima was very good that way. And on the way back, we were going to stop in uh, Navadweep to pay our obeisances to Narayan Maharaj because it was going to be Gaur Purnima, and we were on our way back to Iskand Vrindavan, because I was a Gurukul teacher, I had to teach. And uh, we came into the Mat, and I think it was night, it was the evening, and he was up on the second floor where his rooms, and Bhaktivedanta Vama Maharaj's rooms were, and he was sitting there as if he was waiting for us. <laughs> we hadn't told him we were coming, but he obviously was waiting for us. Because we knew he was our Shiksha Guru by that time. This was probably 93, 
And we came over and said, oh, so nice to see you. <laughs> and we said, oh, yes, we've come to pay our obeisances, and we're on our way back to Vrindavan. <laughs> and he, got, he said, what? You're not staying for Gaur Purnima? He started screaming. I mean, the whole mot was shaking, I swear. He was just, what? You're not staying for corporate We were like, what's happening? You know, Hare Krishna. Because we hadn't even thought of that. That hadn't even entered our minds. You know, no Westerner had ever gone on that pericament before. And I don't know, I, I'm kind of a bold one. So I ran over and I grabbed his feet and I said, I looked at him and said, well, uh, can we go on your pericoma? And uh, <laughs> I didn't even think about, you know, how we were going to do this. And then it, he just changed. He just completely got really soft. And a big smile I said, yes, yes, you can come on our pericoma. We're, we're kind of like, oh, no, what, how, what are we going to do, you know? Well, we changed our train tickets, called the Gurukula, and they had to get substitutes whether they liked it or not. And we stayed, and we uh, were the first Westerners to go on his parikama. There was one, two, three, four, five, six Westerners and Pishima uh, of, of those that had come, you know. It was, and he was so happy. He was so happy. And he even helped us, because we had what you call pup tents. You know, pup tents. These are little tents that you use when you go camping or mountain climbing. They're teeny little tents. And we had two for the women. And there was one man, and he got a room. <laughs> he had a room. But we had these little tents. And um, he helped us put them up. And we put them up at the bottom in the field with all the Bengalis with their, with their mosquito nets. They had their mosquito nets like tents. And we had our little pup tents. And we were all together, you know, all in the midst. And we didn't get any special care or anything. <laughs> And the big gullies, and they never, whoa, whoa, what's this, you know? But Gurudev was so, he was so happy and so proud of us, you know, and Trivia Karmaraj was right here, and Gurudev's right up here. But there was only one, two showers, maybe two toilets and two showers for hundreds and maybe thousands of us, you know? That was new for us. <laughs> I'd get up at one o'clock in the morning so I could, you know, and then you learn to take a shower under the faucet in front of everybody. <laughs> and the loudspeaker was more than loud, 24 hours a day, so you had to learn how to sleep through that. <laughs> it was all in Bengali. And nobody, and we were just kind of being carried along in the ocean of Gore Prame, you know. At first, we were like completely shell-shocked. By the end, we were so addicted, at least I was, I never wanted to leave the Godi Mob, that's for sure. I just never, ever wanted to leave this ocean of Prame. <laughs> and and Srila Vaman Maharaj was there, Srila Trivikram Maharaj was there, Srila Gurdjieff, and even Bhakti Jeevan Janardhan Maharaj was there. And so to have this kind of sadhu sangha, even though we might not have known what they were saying, this sabda brahm has the quality of being able to enter into our hearts and distribute that prame and cleanse the heart if we have faith. And at that point, we had faith. We had some. We weren't completely dira. We weren't completely, you know, but we had some faith. So it was able to enter our hearts and cleanse away so much of that ignorance. Even we didn't even understand anything, nothing like this. So this is the potency of the Gore Bhaktas. The, the Gore Bhaktas. Mm. Okay. Um, so as we hear from Devaki Nandan, you know, in his Vaishnava Vandanam, and we've said this before, Every Gaur Bhakta has the power to liberate a whole universe. A whole universe. So what to speak of one tiny insignificant spirit soul like myself and like all of us? And we didn't need to know the language. He has the power just by glancing at us, thinking about us. You know, any way they can liberate us. So we, we're very fortunate. Very fortunate. 
Isn't that just Mahaprabhu himself? Just the effulgence from his body when he was traveling through South India, traveling everywhere. Hundreds and thousands of personalities became pure devotees. So the bhaktas are also like that. So Srila Prabhupada is like that. Srila Narayan Maharaj is like that. Srila Bhaktivedanta Trivikar Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Bhama Maharaj. All of our Guru Vag, Rukmanu Guru Vag, they're like this. And I experienced that because how else? I didn't know anything. And we were eating with the Bengalis, this rice that was full of stones. <laughs> but we were in bliss. We were in bliss, you know. We were just like one of the Bengalis being lifted along. And when you're on Prickama, you're just like being carried along, you know. It's like Hare Krishna, you know. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable mercy. We didn't know where we were, what we were doing, except for we were in Navadweep, you know. <laughs> We were at the, uh, the Ganga, like this. This kind of experience is what will help us, you know, to realize this material world is not our home. This kind of happiness that we can experience. I experienced it with Srila Prabhupada, and I wasn't personally so much with him, just by serving him in separation. And then I experienced with Shilin Ryan by experiencing in person, you know, it's separation and meeting. But if you have Sri Guru, Sri Guru, he can give you everything in a second if we just surrender to him and make him our life and soul. Try and dedicate every year, every month, every day, every second to pleasing him and serving him. Like this. This was the teaching that Srila Narayan was showing and giving. He had no other purpose than to please his guru. And Srila Swami Maharaj, his other guru. But that was also pleasing his guru. They were like one, Prabhupada and Sh Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj. This is the desire of the original guru, Sachinandan Gorhari, you know, or the original guru, Prem Guru Shivati Radhika. You see? It's all one like this. But he was radical. He was fanatical. <laughs> it was amazing to be around him. He would just... I remember one time when he was... I think he was speaking with the, um, uh, the ISKCON leaders in English. And, um, of course, he was giving so many different classes... And they were discussing, I think it was Jiva Goswami and the Sun Darpas and this and that. And they were discussing the different, because Jiva Goswami presented different points of view and different perspectives. Like he would present uh, Swakya Bhav, he would present this, and so many different perspectives. But his own heart, of course, is Madhurya Ras Parakya Bhav. And they were trying to discuss this. And then Srila Gurudev, he said, but... One has to even give up Jiva Goswami and fanatically follow Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. He would just say, one must do this. One must just give up everything and follow Vishnu, who is the second Rupa Goswami. It's like follow Rupa Goswami, like this in all ways. And it wasn't that we don't follow Jiva. It was just, he was at a mood at that point of, this is what we must do. You know, it's Paraki above Madhurya Ras, Follow the Manjaris of Shimati Radhika, who are in that topmost mood of service to Shimati Radharani, who is in Parakya Bhav, like this. Her her place is Javit, you know, Radha Kun, like this. He was just, don't look left or right, just go for this, like that. Don't waste your time trying to figure out why did Jiva Goswami preach about Swaki and Bob? Why did he do this? Why did he do this? And why did Sanat and Goswami? Why? No, don't waste your time. <laughs> Just take what's being given by Rupa Goswami coming down to the Guru Parampara as what's being presented by your Guru. Like this. Prabhupada, he didn't have a steady... Uh, um, uh, Jiva Goswami's Sandarpas, not at all. We didn't. We didn't have time. We didn't have the brains for that. He just was very one pointed, you know. Very, and we had Radha and Krishna there in our temples. We were supposed to serve Radha and Krishna, you know. Nitai Gore, Jagadapo, you know, just serve, you know. 
go back home, back to Godhead. And that was Vrindavan, you know, you know, like this. And he didn't get into the parakya swarki. He didn't get into any of that. Just chant Hare Krishna. And he would say, join the dancing party of Krishna. <laughs> it's simple, like this. And Srila Gurudev, he fluffed it out. He gave, what does that mean? How does one enter the dancing party of Krishna? And who are you? How do you enter the dancing party like this? So what do we have to do? Chaito darpanam marjanam bhava maha devagni nirvapanam sherekhanava chandra kavitaranam pratipadam purnamrita svarnam sarvatma snapadam param vidayate shri krishna sankirtanam Chant. Chant the holy name. Our siddha pranali, our path for protect, perfection, our method, our process is harinam. Harinam. Without offense. Simple, Trinadapi, like this. Simple Harinam, and hear Harikata. He stressed Harikata. He would say, because so many devotees like Anakadasi, I've got to go on Parikama. And then they miss the Harikata. He would get very upset. He said, first comes Harikata, second comes Parikama. Second comes anything else. First Harikata. And even Prabhupada would say, what's the use of coming to the Holy Dham? I think it's Bhagavatam, isn't it, too? I, I forget in here. Isn't there a verse like if you come and you don't, uh, if you don't find the sadhus and hear from the sadhus? Oh, it's Narutam Das Thakur. Yeah. Like if you're going just for the Tirtha. Right. Just like this is just Parishtam. Like it's, it's just yeah. so like hard work. You know? Yeah, it's just hard work. It's actually sense gratification. If you don't come and find the sadhus and take shelter of the sadhus and hear from them and follow them. Even the Parikama. Although it's much better than going to the bar in the local nightclub, but I mean, definitely it is. But you know, but in 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 relationship to us, wanting to us, Prabhupada would say, and Srila Narayan say, it is possible to go back home, back to Godhead in this life. So that means you got to become pretty serious. You can't just think, okay, I'm going to do parikama because that's what I like to do. I hear Harikata, when I, you know, whenever. And, uh, you know, I'll get serious, you know. I'm 25 years old now, you know. I need to run around, I, you know. You know, I was, uh, I, you know, I'm used to, I was a long run, uh, what do you call it, a cross-country runner when I was in school. I, I got to be running, I just can't sit like that. Sitting for Harikata is so difficult, oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe when I'm, you know, in my 40s or something, you know, I'll be able to... No, he said, don't waste your time. He would also speak a lot about Pallad Shiksha. Pallad Shiksha. Learn Pallad Shiksha. You know? Yeah? He spoke. But of course he would say, mostly he would speak 10th Canto Shiva Bhagavatam. Because by the time... We should know these things already. Bhagavad Gita, Shema Bhagavatam. And he wanted to give us the essence. But he didn't so much in public speak like Ras Lila. In Mathura he would speak, I remember he speak Udav Kata, Udav Kata, even uh, Akura coming to Vrindavan, like this. And he spoke the Rasayan, the book, the last uh, verses of. Uh, uh, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. And he even gave 11th canto Bhagavatam, like this, in Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. One time, though, in, in Kartik, he gave Prem Samput. Prem Samput, very high. He was, he was, you know, taking us here, there. But the main thing always was surrender to Sri Guru. And who is Sri Guru? Sri Guru is a Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishnava. That means he is a maidservant of Srimati Radhika because he's a maidservant of Rupa Manjari. And another thing is, is that he spent, was it 20 years of his life? Did he travel for 20 years? Six, 96 to 2010. How many years was he traveling? 14 years. He gave of his life to make us understand that our Srila Prabhupada, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, is a Rupanuga, Gaudiya Vaishnava, and that he is a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. 
that is his that is who he is. He may be able to help you in Sakya Ras or in Vatsali Ras, but he himself, being a Rupanuga, is a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. He gave 14 years of his life proving it over and over again. So we should be very careful. Very careful. This is the thing. He wanted to help us. Help us so we don't make some some offenses and mistakes that will make us, that will put blocks in our path back home, back to Godhead, in our path of bhakti. He really cared. He cared so deeply, and he didn't care how much he was criticized for doing this. He did not care. Even in his own, um, um, what do you call it, uh, his own Gaudiya Mat, his godbrothers were not so happy always with him. And eventually, before they asked him to leave, he left his own Godiyama, the Godiya Vedanta Samiti, and he um, made his own mats like this, you know. But still, he was always trying to help his godbrothers, always. He, didn't, he, he, he said, and he didn't criticize in public. He did not do that. You know, he just started his own and went his own way and printed his books like this, did his parikamas like this, and his godbrothers would come. They would come on the Vrajmanda parikama. We'd all be together in the Navadri parikama until there was a break. There was a break, and then it was a complete break. And um, I didn't see him upset very often, not very often, but one time I did see him very upset. But he controlled it. And that is when um, Srila Vama Maharaj actually entered Nichalila. And we were in Vrindavan on Parikama. And he was going to go there for the ceremony, the Samadhi ceremony. And unfortunately, they put Bhakti Vedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj in Samadhi before he could get there. And he was very, very upset. That he was very upset. But he controlled it. And he... You know, like this. That, he was very upset. Because they were so close. So close. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, he was, he was very forgiving, very merciful. He never uh, wished anyone ill. Never. Always just trying to everyone to come free from their anarchists, their envy, their jealousy, their desire for Pratista. Like this. Um, there was something else I was going to say. What was it? Um, oh, one time we were talking. We were talking about the Godi Vedanta Samiti. Because it's not easy for conditioned souls to stay together. If one is a pure devotee, that's different. you know. But many in the Godi Vedanta Samiti were conditioned souls. You know, and... Uh, he said, the reason why the Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti stayed together so long was because I showed respect to everyone. I was so, and he never, he never tried to be guru. He didn't become guru until much later when Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj actually told him he should just, you know, he should initiate. And then, of course, when he had his own mission, he initiated. But he was not, even when the ISKCON leaders were coming to him, and there are many devotees, Western devotees, wanted to take initiation from him. At first, he would say, no, I will be your shiksha guru. You go back to ISKCON and you take initiation in ISKCON. And then when there was no other way, when things got a little difficult, then he was forced to initiate. Mm -hmm. Like this. So he was not after Pratista. He was not after lots and lots of disciples. He only wanted to help whatever spirit soul came to him in their path of bhakti and make them qualified to become maidservants of Srimati Radhika, actually, real Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishnavas, like this. And as you know, when he... When, when he um, when he decided to enter Nichalila, 
um, oh, when he decided to enter Nichalila, um, he was in Puri, and it was uh, it was in January. Yeah, it was January. It was January. Oh, December. That's right. December 29th. That's right. He was in Puri, and it was December 29th. And actually, it was at around 3 o'clock in the morning, and he was all by himself, actually. Everyone was sleeping. There was maybe one or two just simple brahmacharis there, new boys, actually. He just easily, easily, very quietly left. He didn't want any big fanfare or anything like this. He just entered that very, very special time of Radha and Krishna when they've just entered their, ended their night pastimes, and they're going to take rest, and then Nishant Leela will start. The meeting between Naisha Leela and Nishant Leela, he just left, entered into his eternal seva, because he's also, as we know, a Manjari, a maidservant of Shimati Radhika. So his life was actually very simple. He never lived opulently, ever. Just simple clothes, everything very simple. His room was simple. He took simple prasadam, you know, like this. And when I first met him, I was still in ISKCON, and uh, when I was coming, uh, his uh, Naveen Krishna Brahmachari, later Madan Maharaj, <laughs> he asked me, would you please buy him a, an air cooler? Because he had lived so many years in this teeny room with nothing but a fan through the hot summers. Unbelievable how austere he was. So I collected money, and we bought him a big air cooler. He refused to take it. He said, you have to give it to Takarji. I will not take something Takarji doesn't have. So they gave it to Takarji. I collected some more, some more money. <laughs> and we, he finally accepted one, the second one. He was like that. Like this. Simple, simple. He only started when he got much older. Then he got some more things. That, because his health wasn't so good sometimes. Like this. He would always travel on the train until much later in life. Always. And even, oh, this is another one. Very simple. I'll, I'll end quick because it's getting late. Um, this is a very, very deep one. It was um, actually when, um, it was on Balaram Purnima. Uh, Balaram Purnima must have been 1995 when he was not asked to come to the Iskan Mat for, to give a lecture on Balaram Panima, because he'd always done that. There was some, as we know, some unfortunate incidences, and there were some problems between Iskan and him at that time. And uh, so he was quite upset, actually. And I remember I went with my friend to see him early in the morning. It was probably about 7 o'clock in the morning. And he was sitting in his room at the Rupsanat and Godi Amat. And he was not speaking. He was just, and they were packing his, <laughs> they were packing. And, uh, and we, I was just, whoa. And he just, and he just got up and he started walking really fast. And his servant, Naveen Brahmachari, is running after him with the stuff. And we're all running after him. And he, he goes to the public bus station. He used to travel on the public bus. And he got in the bus, and I got in the bus too. I thought, well, at least I'm going to pay for everything. It wasn't much. Paid for everybody. And we rode on the bus back to Matura. And he went into his room, and he closed his door. And it's Balaram Purnima, 1995. He didn't say, and then in the evening, he comes out, and he gave such a class on Guru Tattva. And that's when he started his traveling, actually. 1996, he started his traveling because he was going to preach the truth of Guru Tattva. Like this. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Jai Shri Shri Guru Garanga Gandharvika Giri Dhar Radhika Ram Giri Ju Ki Jai Ho Vancha Kalpa Dubis Chad Kripa Sindhu Vibhita Pati Janam Pavane Bio Vaishnava Bio Namo Namaha <clears throat> Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadar Sri Vasadar
Festival Ki Jai. Jai. 